Since Thought Park dropped their awesome train reveal video for Hyperia, there has been a lot of online discourse regarding the lap bar restraints that Mac rides use, with many people concerned they may not be secure enough. So today I'm here to bust some myths and ease your mind so hopefully you can ride Hyperia in full confidence. Over on the Loop Theme Park Adventures Facebook page, I've been seeing comments like this. Only lap bar is mad. Obviously it must be safe as wouldn't be allowed. But can someone explain to me how those lap bars only stop you flying out on such a ferocious ride with twisty tracks? No over shoulder, only lap bar. I'm not going on rat, you've seen the seats. Silly question, but how do you know if the lap bars are safe? And these fears are natural if you haven't ridden a roller coaster with these kind of extreme elements that only has lap bars. So let's have a little chat about this type of restraint system and why you don't need to worry. And we'll begin by going all the way back to the olden days of 2009. A time when Europa Park in Germany debuted Mac's first thrill coaster, Blue Fire Mega Coaster. This was the first iteration of this restraint type from this manufacturer on this kind of roller coaster. Designed with freedom in mind, this would be a lap bar which still comes down from overhead with bars to your sides rather than over your shoulders. Seats that riders sink into with sides that overlap the restraint. High back seats which curve around the shoulders. And they didn't mess around putting these restraints to the test. As Blue Fire's final inversion produces the kind of whip and sideways eject to airtime that will make a lesser restraint system tremble, which ironically many of Mac's restraints do after a few years of operation, but that's due to the rattle. In the 15 years since, Mac rides have gone on to open a further 26 thrill coasters around the world, all using the same kind of restraint system. You may even have heard of some of them, such as Helix at Leesburg, Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland, and of course Icon here at our very own Pleasure Beach Resort in Blackpool. Researching for this video, I couldn't find a single documented incident on any of these attractions. These Roller coasters have processed literally millions of riders and nobody has fallen out. Further to that, Mac continued to be commissioned by huge theme park operators like Universal and Merlin. That has to give you some confidence, right? But if that isn't enough to ease your mind, then let's take a look at the seats and restraints as described by Mac themselves. No shoulder restraints guarantee a maximum of freedom. You never rode a first class seat in a roller coaster like that within the highest safety category class five. So when it comes to restraint safety, there are five classes. Class one is no restraint. Class two, a latching restraint unless guests can brace themselves. Class three is a latching restraint. Class four is a locking restraint. And class five is a locked and monitored restraint. So these restraints are manufactured to the same safety standard as over the shoulder restraints. And these standards are not even set by Mac themselves. They're set by ASTM International, which stands for American Society for Testing Materials. This is part of ISO, the International Organization for Standardization. ASTM are described as an organization that defines and publishes technical standards related to the quality of materials that can be used in the manufacturing of various products and pieces of equipment. To date, over 12,000 safety standards set by ASTM are used globally, and their most recent guidelines state that a Class 5 restraint must have all of the following things. A restraint device shall be provided for each individual patron. The final latching position of the restraint must be variable in relation to the patrons, for example, a lap bar or a rail with multiple latching positions to allow for people of different heights and weights. The restraint device shall be automatically locked. Only the operator shall manually or automatically unlock the restraint. An external indication is required. Detecting the failure of any monitor device shall either bring the ride to a cycle stop or inhibit cycle start. So if the system detects an issue with the restraint or that is not locked correctly, then the ride cannot even leave the station. The restraint may be manually or automatically, for example, motorized, opened or closed. Redundancy shall be provided for the locking device function. This relates to having fail safe systems in place should for any reason the main locking system fail. So there is always at least one backup locking device, kind of like having a backup parachute. And finally, two restraints, for example, shoulder and lap bar or one fail safe restraint device is required. And in Hyperia's case, this is what we have. It's a single fail safe restraint. But what about other roller coaster manufacturers? Don't they all use over the shoulder restraints? Well, not really, no. If you're watching this from the UK, then you'll be familiar with roller coasters like Nemesis, The Swarm and Oblivion, which are manufactured by a company called B&M and Stealth and Rita, both manufactured by Intamin. B&M have been using their clamshell lap bar 
restraint system on their Hyper and Giga coasters since 1999. Their tallest and fastest attractions, and ironically two of them are featured on my t-shirt today. And Intamin have been using a similar restraint system to Mac on the majority of their thrill coasters since 2014, including Sick at Flamingoland. So along with Icon, that's two UK based roller coasters with inversions you can check out yourself in the build up to Hyperia's opening that may help you conquer the fear of lap bars. I'll leave you with one final statistic. The chances of being injured on any roller coaster are 1 in 24 million. So I think the odds are in your favour. I hope this video has offered you some reassurance. Let me know down below if this has helped you find your fearless and you'll be riding Hyperia when it opens. And please like and subscribe if you have found this useful. All this Hyperia talk is exciting, isn't it? And something else that's super exciting is that Universal Studios held a public engagement event for their proposed UK theme park at the weekend. So I popped down to check it out. That video is up on the screen now. Cheers. Catch you next time.